I feel like an area where I've been docking points from almost everything I've been reviewing recently is its legitimacy as an actual commuting vehicle. But this, I am very impressed by. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan, and today I'm gonna to be taking a look at the Apollo City Pro. The 2022 version of the Apollo City is aiming to be the best urban commuter out there. It has dual motors and dual suspension, all for a price tag of 1,499 US dollars as of writing this review. So is this really one of the best scooters out there for commuting? We're gonna take a look next on Now Let's Review. All right, here we are with the Apollo City Pro. This is a pretty new scooter from Apollo. It is really, really neat. There's a lot of cool things about this scooter and I'm excited to talk about them all. So let's get into it. So first thing I wanna talk about really quickly is just the design overall. I think this is a really nice looking scooter. They clearly took their time when designing this and really went for a good looking scooter that has functionality and good form. Getting into the specs, one of the standout things about this particular scooter is the fact that it has two 500 watt motors. So it's got one in the front wheel and one in the back. These motors work together to bring this scooter up to a top speed of 32 miles an hour. Now there are three speed modes. Mode one gets you up to 10 miles an hour. Mode two gets you up to 21 miles an hour and mode three gets you up to 32 miles an hour. Top speed, 32 miles an hour. Honestly, perfect speed for this kind of scooter. Yes, it is almost the size of some of the larger, super high performance scooters, but I mean, 32 miles an hour, like it, you don't really ever need to be going faster than that on a scooter. It's really comfortable. It's stable at speed. Let's do an acceleration. Zero to top speed. Ready, go. This picks up very well for this kind of scooter. I mean, it is a performance. And there's top speed, okay. It has good pickup for a while, but once you start getting up to like the mid to high 20s, especially the, around the mid 20s, it really just starts to level off and kind of just creeps its way up to the top speed. So there's a really significant drop off starting at like 25 miles an hour. Bottom of the hill, you guys know the deal. Full throttle in the sport mode, I'm gonna see how it does. And because this has two motors, I have no doubt that this is gonna tackle this hill with ease, which it is doing. Still accelerating up the hill, getting to the steepest part. 25, 26, not a problem for this scooter. To control those motors, you have a thumb throttle on the right handlebar here. And on the left handlebar, you also have a very similar looking thumb throttle. Uh, this is actually a regen brake lever. In addition to the regen brakes, you do have front and rear mechanical drum brakes. Throttle response, super quick. There's a little bit of a delay, like a tiny bit of a delay, but it's consistent. And uh, there's almost there's basically no dead zone in the in the thumb throttle. Like every bit of throw is actually used. It's great. It's really responsive. And same thing with the regen brakes. Like every little bit of input you give actually does something. So as I mentioned, this does have regen brakes and drum brakes. Now, I can't effectively test the drum brakes at the moment, but I'll do regen brakes from 32, go. <laughs> oh boy. So the thing is, the regen brakes have a lot of stopping power. They actually do a very good job of being the primary brakes, but for like high speed emergency stopping like that, they don't, they can't bring it to a stop quick enough. So here's the brake test with the drum brakes and regen from 32, go. Yeah, okay, well. I locked up the tire and made a huge skid mark, but there's a significant increase in stopping power. This is powered by a 48 volt, 18 amp hour lithium ion battery that gives it a claimed range of up to 38 miles. The scooter's frame is made out of aluminum. The whole scooter as a whole is just really high quality. It feels really well made. All the parts feel very nice. This is definitely a premium scooter. Although I will say something I've noticed is that at higher speeds, I do kind of get this like front wheel hop where it just like rapidly bounces or jitters. And uh, it's a little, little bit disconcerting, but it's not too, too bad. In the middle of the handlebars here, you have your display, which shows your ride mode, your speed, your trip distance, your odometer, has a headlight indicator and a battery level readout. The display is pretty clear. It's easy to read, but it is a bit on the dim side in direct bright sunlight. Also on the handlebars, you have your power button here, which you also use to change the ride mode. You will also notice that there are two buttons, one on each side, 
with arrows pointing side to side. And if you haven't already guessed what that is, that is directionals. This has built-in turn signals, super cool. They're only on the back, uh, but I mean, that's arguably more important. So not only is this scooter fast and powerful and well-made, but it's also very comfortable. This has front and rear suspension. It has a dual spring suspension setup in the back and a single spring suspension setup in the front. Another area where this scooter really shines is rider comfort. Um, handlebar height is great. From the bend of my elbow, my, my arms are basically straight out. Perfect handlebar height. I'm 5'9", super comfortable for me. But also the suspension. As I mentioned, this has uh, front and rear suspension. And like, let me go on this sidewalk. But yeah, I mean, this sidewalk is like brutal. It's got massive cracks and potholes and dips and stuff. And this is super, super comfortable. Like obviously no scooter is gonna be perfect and make every bump go away. But this does a really good job of making super rough pavement pretty bearable for the most part. The tires on this scooter are 10 inch tubeless tires that are self healing. Yeah, the high speed wheel hop is the only thing that's concerning me. Obviously these tires have street oriented tread, but even so, like this is all just loose dirt and gravel here. And uh, that's fine. It does perfectly fine. On the front here, you can see the LED headlight. It's far from the brightest headlight I've seen, but I mean, if you're gonna be doing a lot of night riding anyways, you should probably get like a bike light or something to put on or a Lumos helmet. It's got the range, it has the power, it has the suspension, the comfort. This is a well-equipped scooter to use as a actual means of transportation. So the deck is about 22 inches long of usable space, measured it from here to here. It's about eight inches wide right here at the widest spot and it tapers down to a relatively narrow five and a half inches about right here. And uh, obviously it doesn't really matter in the back because you usually just have one foot up on the back anyways. Also, as I mentioned, deck size, again, I wear size 11, so I find it pretty difficult to get my feet comfortably on a lot of scooter decks, but this one is no problem. Plenty of room, even though it does taper down in the back, it's pretty comfortable. As with most scooters nowadays, this can be folded down for easier storage or transport. And doing so with this is very simple. Simply undo this latch, the stem folds down, and then it's got a built-in hook on the stem here that you undo and latch onto this little latch that flips up. Once you have the hook on there, you can lift the scooter up. This does weigh 65 pounds, so it is definitely on the heavier side. If you've got a bad back or just don't have the strength to carry this any long distances or do much lifting, this is gonna be a tougher one to move around. It also has a maximum rider weight of 265 pounds and is IP56 water resistant. Here's the thing, a lot of companies market their scooters as commuting scooters, whether or not they're actually viable commuting options, whether or not they're actually scooters that could safely or effectively be used for commuting. The unfortunate truth is that you have to spend some money to get something that's good. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Apollo City Pro. I think this scooter is a perfect balance between the everyday commuter and the dual suspension, dual motor, high performance crazy scooters that you can find out there. It's very high quality, very comfortable, and extremely fun to ride. If this scooter has been on your list and you're considering buying it, I would say go right ahead. You will be very happy with this scooter. Anyways, that wraps it up for this review of the Apollo City Pro. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment down below letting us know what you think of this scooter. Do you think it's worth it for the money? Is it a good blend of performance and capability and also subscribe if you're interested in other reviews of electric scooters bikes and all that stuff one last thing i want to add is that recording this video for the apollo city is the last knowledge review video i will be personally recording we have footage for lots of other videos that, that will be coming out after this video that will also be featuring me but recording this video is actually the last video i'll be working on i am moving on from now you know i want to give a huge thank you to zach and jesse from now you know the whole team here it's been so awesome to work with them Please show your love and your support in the comments. Like these videos, subscribe to both channels. It's been an amazing experience. Thank you all for supporting me on this channel and the work that I've been able to do. I've had a great time reviewing all this stuff. I hope in some way the videos I've made have been impactful for you. Thank you again for your support. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's review.